Hello everyone, welcome to another easy programming tutorial with C++. Um, I know this is uh, later than I expected to be for the third part of the C++ Qs video. Uh, I've gotten extremely busy, plus a lot of things have happened, um, so I haven't been able to get this up until now. But um, if you looked at the last two C the Q videos, you'd be able to work with C++ Qs using functions but this one isn't actually a third part, it doesn't teach you anything added on to the old one, it just teaches you an alternative to on how to use C++ queues. Um, today we'll be using include queue in the header. Uh, we've done this with stacks and uh, I'll show you that you can do this with queue as well and it'll make the program much shorter, much more neat because all the functions are built in, you don't have to define them, you don't have to declare them it works similarly to um, my 30th tutorial, C++ Stacks. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, on the screen you have my basic setup, you know, include IO stream, include string. I'll be working with string. Uh, you don't have to work with string uh, for this. Uh, and we'll be using include queue. So you know, I'll just copy that and um, paste it on here. That's it. It's just like you know, include stack. It'll work the same way. You declare uh, Q variables this way, the same way as stacks. So you do Q. You, um, you need to define what kind of a variable it will be. You can use int, but for this case, I'll use string because I've included string here. And you need to name the Q. Uh, I'll name it what I named it for the last. Q tutorial, which was students, I believe, um, or stu name. We'll put that in another string. You need to declare another variable. This is a variable. The top is a Q. And I'll do stu name here. This is short for student name. And we'll need one more, which is char quest. Uh, it works the same way as, um, sorry, it works the same way and it asks the person if he wants to enter. Uh, another value to the queue. Uh, there will be no limit to this queue. We won't be using arrays here. So uh, let's get started. Um, see out. Do you want to enter data? It's the same as the last tutorial. CN quest. There we go. Uh, it'll Take in a value of uh, capital Y or lowercase y, and if it does that through the while loop, it'll go into the while loop and it'll ask for the student's name, and we will start using queues from there. So, we'll do while quest equals to lowercase y or uppercase y, or sorry, quest equals to lowercase y. We do see out please enter data for a queue uh, this asks the user to input something for the queue and we will have to do this uh, stu name stu name not the queue we're entering this value you can't enter directly into the queue actually you can uh, but I'm gonna turn it into an extra step so you see exactly what's happening. So once the program gets the stu name, what you want to do is pass it on to the queue, which is named students. In Visual Studio, if you put students, uh, name of the variable, name of the queue, and you put a dot, a little drop-down box should come up. Uh, it shows you the different functions that are built into the queue. And for this, I will use push. Uh, in our last tutorial, we used NQ and DQ, but for this we'll use push and pop is the same as stacks. I used NQ and DQ last time to separate the functions for the stacks and the queues just so there wasn't any confusion. But for this one, uh, you have to use push since it's a built in function. And you want to send down an argument to stu name. Uh, well, the great thing about this is that you don't have to define it at the bottom or in another file what students.push means. It's inside it's already built into um, include queue. So you want to ask this question again. 
so that it goes back into the while loop and close it. Uh, and this part of the program is complete. The next thing you have to do is output what you entered, right? So while students, if you put dot again, things come up. You can just type it in, or you can click it. You know, it's empty. You want to make sure that the in while the stacks is not empty, while well, the queue is not empty. Excuse me, that it will keep outputting. You want to put this in there so that it doesn't keep outputting random numbers or um, empty values or memory data, uh, which it will keep doing if it doesn't have any place to stop. And this part is for the argument. Uh, we're not sending down any arguments. Uh, make sure you close it and you do C out students dot. Remember last time we used front and back. Uh, we're going to use the same thing here. Front. No, uh, no arguments uh, <clears throat> in this function. It's also built in. We'll do and line and students dot. Same thing as the stacks. We will use pop. And there you go. This part is complete. This was a short program, right? If we run it, um, it will run. Let's see how it does. I will enter a few names. There. Uh, do you want to enter data? Yes. Uh, Homer. Yes. Let's see. Peter. Yes. Fry. Let's see three names, right? You put no. And it outputs it in the same order it gets in Homer, Peter, Fry. If this was a stack, it would have been backwards. Uh, there are a few other built in useful functions for this uh, that you can use. For example, I'll put an um, empty line there. We'll do C out uh, students. You know, so you see that there are a few other functions that you can use. Uh, you can check what the last value was in a program, you know, just in case you're not the one that entered it in and it's not on the screen, you can check what the last value was so you can carry on your queue if you're working on a program. So you can do this. You don't have to include any arguments. Uh, you do end line. I'll put two there just for just to space things out and there's another function that I want to show you is students dot and this one is called size. It's the same as the stacks. It shows you the size of the queue. Uh, if you run it, you'll you'll see you know what the functions of back and size are. There we go. Do y Homer y Peter and y Fry. Press no. And you see the last value entered was fry. The size of the queue is three, and this is the order they were put in. And this is C++ queues when you use include queue. Uh, it's really simple. It it's a lot shorter than defining the functions since everything is built in. You don't have to worry about that. Uh, there are other built-in functions for queues that you can try out, um, but I won't be showing them to you here. Um, I'll put this up on my website soon as well as the other two. Um, I need some time to update it. And uh, if you have any questions about this, feel free to ask. Uh, this is pretty useful to know just as Stacks is. Um, uh, thanks for watching and remember to subscribe.